Welcome to the Reptile Creature Series. I've broken this one up into two parts, high-res asset creation and game-res asset production. But I will say that if you get both parts together, there will be an extra 90 minutes of instructional video, which I'll go over in detail at the end of this intro. Part one is for those of you interested in only the high-res creature creation. Now, you may recognize the subject as the Reptile Creature Bust from the Intro to ZBrush Part 2 and 3 series. And while those sections did contain a few sped up commentary overviews on the making of the bust in the bonus section, they didn't really go in depth on the actual creation of the mesh, which is what this series is all about. Part 1 for this series has 69 videos and more than 8 hours dedicated to the creation of the high res reptile creature asset. Now, don't think that this is 8 hours of me using the clay brush. As always, every section will contain multiple approaches to tackling a task, not necessarily just the one I used for the original creation. And since I like my instruction to be chock full of useful information for you in your own projects, I'll not only explore the creation process from a design standpoint, but we'll also be delving deep into technique as well. This will ensure that when you're done with these videos, you'll have, at the very least, the know-how to accomplish your own unique projects with your new problem-solving skills learned in these videos. Each section will contain an overview video with commentary, so you can get an idea of the scope of this section, followed by a real-time breakdown of each technique utilized in the overview video. We'll start rolling with Dynamesh and the basic brushes we'll be using to start sketching in 3D. As we progress through our block out, we'll be covering design, proportion, anatomy, silhouette, texture, all things essential to the creation of our character, besides just the technical know-how to get the job done. From the simple bust block out, we'll move on to body creation, covering a number of techniques. And before we get too far, I'll go over a few proportional techniques to make sure our initial landmarks are correct. This will include bringing in the skeleton found in the ZBrush lightbox, making a head unit plane to check your proportions, as well as utilizing the transposed line preferences to mark head units for easy proportion checking. We'll also do a section on evaluating silhouette in ZBrush, and utilizing basic material and light setups to check your work as you go. We'll first discuss breaking pieces off and refining them individually, using insert brushes and topology brushes to create quick teeth, eyes, horns, mouth flaps, tongues, etc. And at this point, you'll have the basic idea of your character down split into parts that make it easier to work on while ensuring that the pieces still work together as a whole. From here, we'll start moving on to secondary detail. We're not at the poor detail stage yet, but we're continuing to build up resolution as we go, getting into bigger wrinkles, indications of different skin textures, and answering subtool integration questions. And since this creature has large secondary details like scales, we'll be talking about how to create a custom multi-insert brush to add the right detail in the right spots. Brush settings to ensure that while you're applying them to the object, they conform to the underlying structure, as well as other simple techniques and settings that will make moving and changing multiple objects easy. This section is another example of using multiple techniques to arrive at similar results. In addition to insert brush solutions, we'll cover nano mesh techniques that you might find more useful for your own creations or projects that you attempt down the line. Once all of our secondary shapes are in, it's time to start detailing. We'll go over retopologizing and projection techniques to create meshes that detail and smooth more predictably. We'll also talk about skin direction and different techniques to achieve the surface look you're going for, using alphas for detail, as well as creating your own alphas from scratch right within ZBrush. We'll cover surface noise, curve brushes, and finally, you'll get the poly painting. And we're going to go over the basics all the way through brush modes, masking, building up layers of color, all working together to achieve a complex but still readable base color for your creature. We'll also talk about materials, lighting, spotlight texturing, and even post-effect filters to help you achieve exactly the look you want for your final poly paint render.